Hello and welcome to Journey to Success, our series of fabulous conversations featuring President Scholars here at the beach. I'm Valerie Bordeaux, Director of the President Scholars Program, and with me is the wonderful Jeannie Hurley, who's the Associate Director of the program. President Scholars are California high school valedictorians and national scholars who compete for a full ride scholarship with hundreds of talented scholars from across the state. And we're so excited to have with us today Joey Seamus and Danny Carson. How are you doing? Thanks for having hey, us. Doing welcome. Well. Good, thanks. Yay. So when we were prepping for the show today, we were talking about the fact that you both have come from rural backgrounds, you from Big Bear and you from Ceres, but that you had always wanted to get out and explore and do something different. Did you do that, Danny? Yes, definitely. Coming down to Long Beach, uh -huh. the city was exploring in its own, mm -hmm. basically driving off of the mountain mm -hmm. my first time, driving in traffic, living in a city, being able to experience the diversity that they have down here was incredible. And that only expanded my interest in traveling even more. Mm -hmm. So my friends had sent me a link to a program called the Bolivian Express. Uh -huh. Since I'm a journalism and anthropology major, I thought it was fitting because it's for, um, aspiring journalists mm -hmm. to write for a magazine down in Bolivia. Perfect for you. Yes, perfect for me. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. And also I'm a Spanish minor, mm -hmm. so it was great. It was a, it, the culture was really, really rich mm -hmm. and it was, it was just a completely different experience. It's really, there's just so much to talk about. And was there a little culture shock? Was there a moment where you, um, you know, realized, wow, I'm not at home anymore and, and kind of how did you feel about that? That happened immediately mm -hmm. yeah. after walking, um, getting off the plane, walking out of the airport. Yeah. I had to communicate in Spanish, mm -hmm. which was very different. Uh -huh. And all in all, over the two months, it helped me with my Spanish more than my oh, six yeah. years of studying Spanish yeah. did. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot about everything, really. You know, how you buy food there, mm -hmm. yeah. how to how to conduct yourself in public, mm -hmm. how to yeah. talk to people. Mm -hmm. um, being a journalist definitely put me out there even more. So even if even if I wanted to try to avoid that culture shock, I couldn't. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. I got you out were there. in it. I was right yeah. there yeah. in yeah. it. In it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, learned learned dances, got to celebrate festivals with the people. It was incredible. Wow. Oh. Wow. So how about you, jo uh, Joey? How was your uh, uh, out of series experience? <laughs> it was very good. It's funny because it really does mirror Danny's experience very well. Um, coming to Long Beach too was, was, uh, was like, I guess the first step, right? You know, you don't consider that traveling a lot of the time, just going to another place in the state, but it really was kind of a different world. And Where'd then, you go? <laughs> no, from Sirius to Long Beach. Oh, and then, <laughs> then Long Beach to South Africa, <laughs> which is my big, that's my big thing, okay. right? When you, yeah. when, when I flew all the way over there, that was, that was a really cool experience as well. I got to see a country and obviously part of the bigger continent that's completely different. Yeah. From what was your first thought when you came out of the airport in South Africa and just kind of saw, you know, people and the food and, and you know, everything? What was one of your first thoughts? Do My you remember? My first thought is it's really hot because <laughs> we came there because we came from yeah, February, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it was cold in California, cold in New York. That's a connecting oh, yeah. flight. We go down there and it was hot. Oh wow. The second thing I thought was, uh, yeah, it's just different, I guess. I mean, yeah. we're what? driving what through. <laughs> well, just, you know, I mean, just the things that you see. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a coastal town. So I guess in many ways you could draw a parallel yeah. mm -hmm. to Long Beach, but uh, every, obviously the, the, the demographics completely change. Yeah. Long Beach is one of the most diverse places there is. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a large African majority, correct, right? right. So, mm -hmm. and that's one of the, that's the people are different. The style of buildings is yeah. different. Like if you go to the downtown part of Port Elizabeth, that's mm -hmm. a that's a city that's you know a couple hundred right. years old. They have a couple really old European style buildings, which mm -hmm. is just right. really mm -hmm. interesting. Uh -huh. And then two, you're talking about driving through parts of a third world country. So mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. next right next to the first world part where I live. There's third world town, what they call townships, mm -hmm. just very, very, just terribly poor regions. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and that's mm -hmm. just another thing that's completely yeah. different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it was a it was a big culture shock in some ways for you. And what I think is interesting is you were there two months, right? Mm -hmm. And you were there how long? A Ten year? Months. Ten months. Yeah. Ten months. Um, did you? It makes me wonder. Did you wish that you were able to stay longer? Because two months is pretty short amount of time once you're in it. Well. 
what I what it made me really want to do while I was there in Bolivia is a lot of a lot of backpackers and expats pass through there. Mm -hmm. um, I met a lot of people who, for example, in Israel, everyone signs up immediately for the military, and then after leaving the military after their tour, they everyone goes backpacking. And mm -hmm. one of the girls from Israel was telling oh. me it's always South America because South America is really cheap, uh -huh. and that inspired me to do that. Hopefully, yeah. in the future. So uh -huh. if I had gotten to stay for another month, uh -huh. I would have definitely traveled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm through Peru, maybe to Argentina. Yeah. Uh -huh, even yeah. more. You know, a lot of people when they, they travel, they say they go to learn about others and different cultures. But also, I would imagine that you found out traveling something about yourself, perhaps, that you didn't realize before. So what, what did you find out about yourself as you were learning about others? Hmm. That's right, that's a good question, I think. And I think that's something that, it's, it's Cliche, it seems cliche when you're traveling, but it's it's really true. Mm -hmm. And it's just the little things you notice just even about coming back to mm -hmm. America. Like I appreciate my life in America so much mm -hmm. more because of course, seeing these different types of, I guess, lifestyles or mm -hmm. these different types of, of countries where it, it, people just aren't, quite simply aren't as fortunate as mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. And- So you appreciate what you have. Precisely, yeah. and yeah. just getting to live in America, it's a diverse country and it just makes, coming back made me feel like I'm coming home. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh -huh. it really helped America feel like a home to uh -huh. me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. What'd you learn about yourself, Danny? It taught me that I truly prefer to live simply. Because yeah. here, here, you know, we're very materialist society yeah. here in the States, yeah. which there's there's not really anything wrong with that. We're very privileged, but at the same time, um, mm -hmm. I would really just love to live only with the things that I can put on my back. And that's sort of what I learned there, seeing all the backpackers pass through, uh -huh. um, you know, being the best way to live there is being highly mobile, you mm -hmm. know, being able to experience as much as possible. So mm -hmm. I learned that eventually I hope to be that way so I'll be able to experience more. Keep That's such a good fit for you and, and <laughs> just shows that you're adventurous because not everybody would think, oh, I want to go live with just what's on my back, in my backpack, you know what right. I mean? That second pair of shoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not, not yeah. everybody right. would want to That's do that, good. you know. It's so some, and, and of course, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm tied to that really yeah. nice purse, uh -huh. really yeah. nice pair of jeans, yeah. but at the same time, I don't want to be. So yeah. 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 I hope someday, eventually, I'll be able to separate myself from that. Yeah, so it sounds like you learned well, that you appreciated the simplicity a little more. Definitely. And it also sounds like you learned that it also made you aware of how much you have that maybe you took for granted before, right? Yeah, exactly. So you guys learned some good, good So, things. Danny, I know that you're a vegetarian. Yes. So I'm, I'm interested oh. to, to hear about, <laughs> you know, what you ate, how you ate, and then also what were the differences in terms of the, the culinary experiences <laughs> that you had, Yeah, Joey. that's right. What I loved about living there in Bolivia or in South America in general is that a lot of things are based more on agriculture mm -hmm. and more simple forms of food. So the food was a lot less processed, which as a vegetarian naturally I'm interested in health. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it was, you know, made right there in front of you yeah. or you know that it was made in the home of the person that was selling it and uh -huh. a lot of it was street food mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. personally owned businesses. Mm -hmm. So being vegetarian, it wasn't it wasn't the easiest thing, uh -huh. you know, because they do eat, they do eat a lot of meat there, as uh -huh. in, as most countries do. But uh -huh. um, still, I was able to eat some street food. They had these things called um, salteñas, uh -huh. which were sort of a cornbread um, encasing a soupy substance. Some mm. some of them were vegetarian. Uh -huh. It was really interesting. Uh -huh. Something like something you've never tasted before. They had tamale like things called um, humintas. So you didn't starve. No, <laughs> most definitely. I ate, I ate a lot more than I should have. They have they have these uh, restaurants there. Traditional Bolivian style dining is always a three course meal, wow. which costs approximately twenty to thirty bolivianos, which is the equivalent to maybe let me think the equivalent to three to five dollars. Oh my gosh, States. three course meal for five. Oh my gosh. three course meal, and it was a I gigantic meal. Oh my gosh. Usually a soup, um, you know, a, a main course ending with a postre, which uh -huh. is a pastry oh. or dessert. So it was high A, really good when I was up there. Yeah, <laughs> Come on it's down. Good <laughs> How about you, Joey? What'd you experience? In terms of the different culture, it was interesting. I didn't find it to be so different from America. Mm -hmm. That was really interesting. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of, like, there's so many fast food restaurants over there that people oh, eat really? all the time. Like all my friends that were at the university yeah. with me are uh -huh. always eating KFC or And it was the same McDonald's. as our menu or was it? <laughs> More or less. They had some okay. interesting items. Yeah. Like, 
like they have the Texan burger or the you know they have the the Mexican burger, <laughs> okay. which is just yeah the Something little we don't, subtle stuff we twist. Don't have, but. Um, big big in South Africa is meat. People love ironically, right? We're just talking about vegetarians. <laughs> People love to eat meat. Sorry, Danny. The Sorry. like brying brying is essentially more or less barbecuing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big South African cultural tradition that you know all the people there love to bry, and a lot of the time. They just, yeah, they brought tons of different meats, like borvors, that's a type of sausage. Yeah. And my personal favorite, which is ostrich. Ostrich is killer. I love ostrich meat. It's Ooh. delicious. Danny says no thanks, <laughs> but. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, that, that is something I discovered over there is ostrich is. See, the first oh, thing I think about good. is, does it taste like chicken? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, a, that's the funniest part. Ostrich is, it's pretty weird. It's, it's a uh, red meat, you know, that comes from a yeah. bird. It's uh -huh. really lean red meat that comes uh -huh. from the bird. So you uh -huh. have steaks, you have burgers. Uh -huh. it's, it was, was that the most exotic great. thing you ate? No, the most exotic thing I ate was a caterpillar. Oh caterpillars. my gosh. Because people, they, they had like this cultural booth from, oh, yeah. from Botswana. Wow. Uh -huh. and, they had these, they have caterpillars in this little, I guess, tomato sauce. And then it just tasted like mm. tomatoes. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> it was crunchy. I like, I like them. Like they were kind of like popcorn, yeah. you know, you could just pop a few in your mouth. So. <laughs> Did you get a chance to make friends or have deeper connections with people either with, in South Africa or in Bolivia? Yeah, um, the nightlife in Bolivia is a very, very active nightlife and it's a lot of dancing and celebrating. Uh -huh. So I got to go out and learn new dances. There was a lot of salsa clubs and stuff. Wow. So I made a few friends out there that uh -huh. I still talk to. Uh -huh. At the same time, a lot of the other interns there mm -hmm. were from the UK. Mm -hmm. So I made some connections over in the UK ah. and I still talk to those people as well. So. And did you break out some belly dancing at the club, by the way? Because I know you do belly mm -hmm. dancing too. I yes. actually didn't, <laughs> oh, but <laughs> I, did, I did improve my salsa. So. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. That's a good question. <laughs> did you, you make any other kind of connections, Joy? The most interesting thing I found about the people that I meet and the, the friendships and relationships I, I had there is that you really, there's a lot of motivation to really bond with the people that are in the same position yeah. as you. Ah, so okay. it's interesting on our campus here, we have a lot of study abroad students and mm -hmm. it always seems like the study abroad students hang out together a lot of yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. And Makes then sense. I studied abroad and I felt completely the it's same the way. Same and uh, I, I made some really good friends from Germany and from Minnesota actually, uh -huh. just randomly. Oh, uh -huh. So that was pretty cool to uh -huh. be able to because when you're with these people that are studying abroad, you're, you know, you want to do the touristy things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That maybe not so many of the local people do. Mm -hmm. And I did make some local friends, but mm -hmm. I was really amazed. And it was a really, really positive thing to be able to, to make, to have these friendships with these people from yeah. all these other places that aren't even from South Africa. So I thought that was really Dancing interesting. Dancing and eating caterpillars. That's right. We're going to be back and hear more <laughs> from Joey and Danny. Hi, I'm Andrea Caban, and I'm the head of voice and speech in the theater arts department. And this summer, I'm going to be teaching an online course called How the World Talks. It's Theater 212, where we will be exploring all the sounds in human language, from beatboxing sounds like to clicks like in order to become more confident and articulate speakers. It's gonna work great in the online format. We are going to make videos and create sound samples. I think it's gonna be a really fun and rewarding summer course. Welcome back to Journey to Success. I'm here with my friend Jenny Hurley, mm -hmm. and with us today are Joey and Danny. So, Joey, you're a chemical engineering major. What what uh, what do you want to do with your chemical engineering major in the future? That's a good question. It's a really broad field. I really like the I, my major. I really like my major, and I really like the idea of being able to make a large impact on the world when you're dealing with chemicals mm -hmm. and just the, the processes that a chemical engineer has to deal with, you're dealing with things on a very, very large scale. Mm -hmm. like, I'm really interested in energy. For example, they have, there's a lot of avenues for success as a chemical engineer in like oil refinery or natural gas drilling, which is not necessarily the most 
it, well, let's just say it's a hotly contested uh -huh, topic, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. So I think that having, I think that I would be able to make a difference. Make a difference. Yeah. Exactly, that's yeah. the word. It's yeah. it's, it's yeah. a. It's a big field. It needs, you know, some fresh, fresh blood. I think, and I think and I'm excited that. that I can make a good change. Do you have <laughs> Do you have engineers in your family? Because I know a lot of times people, you know, follow career paths mm -hmm. of others in their family. Yeah, that's a really good question. I have I have uh, one of my uncles. He's an he's a civil engineer. Uh -huh. um, but besides that, no. I guess my dad. He's really into science, and me and my dad would would kind of get into that okay. as, as when we were young. He's a big bio guy, so he's always talking okay. about different species of animals. And so there's some comfort animals. there as far as being exposed to sciences and so forth for oh, you. Oh yeah, definitely. That maybe led to, to your decision, so. How about you, Danny? You, you uh, want to become an, a journalist and an anthrop anthropologist who speaks Spanish, who doesn't eat caterpillars, but who likes to dance. Yes, it seems it seems like pretty, <laughs> a bunch of pretty different things I'm trying to combine. But what I really want to do with anthropology uh -huh. is basically I love how anthropologists just learn about people. Yeah. I absolutely love learning about people. I love learning in general, mm -hmm. which is kind of, it's funny. A lot of people would call me a nerd, but I just, I think it's the funnest Nerds thing ever. Nerds are cool. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Um, but so basically my philosophy is um, I absolutely love learning, and I also love teaching. I've done a lot of tutoring. Okay. Um, I teach skiing. So I absolutely love teaching and reaching out to people. So I figured through anthropology, I would be able to learn. And with journalism, I'd be able to teach. Ah. So if I can go out into the field as a journalist and have this background um, of anthropological knowledge, mm -hmm. be able to go and live with different cultures, mm -hmm. or at least be able to observe different cultures, uh -huh. I could write articles and get those ideas out there for the general public to be able to read and learn from. Wow. How did you decide on that path? Because that, you know, it's it's different than... It's actually really, really random. My best friend flies remote control planes. Uh -huh. So oh. he, it's a really, really niche field. Uh -huh. He assembles these planes and um, I'm not even positive how exactly they work, but he puts them together mm -hmm. and he uses a remote control to fly them. Yeah. And these people need to know a lot about the wind, a lot about the weather. They need to know the right spaces, uh, the right places to go to. Mm -hmm. So I was watching him one day and I was thinking, this is so interesting. This mm -hmm. is such a beautiful thing that people do. Why does no one know about this and why does no one talk about this? You're curious. I'm, yeah, I'm extremely curious. Uh -huh. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. Ah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and so that sort of sparked for you. Yeah. So I thought, I thought, well, I would love to just study people and just watch people, and I would love to share these things with other people. Yeah. So why not combine anthropology and journalism? Yeah. Were you a curious little kid? Were you always getting into stuff? And yeah, I was. Were you yeah, the one that so. talked a lot in the classroom? Because I'm just curious. I was the teacher's pet. <laughs> oh, you were. <laughs> you were the, I was teacher's, definitely the pet. teacher's pet. Um, I guess. Did I you guess bring the little me. apple and be like? Oh Hello, no! Teacher. I I remember I used to bring my teachers like like pictures of me like oh look I went to the zoo <laughs> last weekend. Oh wow! I was a silly I was a silly little kid, but I was I was really curious. I was always you know building things yeah. and, and painting rocks and collecting things, and I was different yeah. kinds of things. Different kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. How what about you? Were you the teacher's <laughs> pet? <laughs> we I know you want to know that too. I <laughs> was really into studies yeah i was really into into working hard in school mm -hmm. i i like to think that me and my teachers got along pretty well <laughs> ever <laughs> since know. elementary school yeah yeah it, yeah it's good well it's just funny because in elementary school i was really self-directed and i would always just try to like i mean yeah me, w my teachers would respect me and i would uh -huh. respect them i would i would try to follow the class but then i'll be like can I please just read this book? Because I'd want to read a book, uh, just a different random book, uh -huh. and they'd be like, all right, Joey. Why? Why is that? I mean, what, what was it about you that you wanted to do your own thing <laughs> in elementary school? Um, I don't want to say, I don't want to sound super precocious, but in elementary school, I was always really interested in things that I guess were above my grade level. Yeah. Well, so that's I was, cool. What's wrong yeah, with that? I don't know. Well, I just don't want it to be like, bragging right but we're not judging <laughs> we're not, we're not judging. judging but um i yeah i would read i remember yeah i was really i would be randomly into dinosaurs so i'd read like these textbooks on dinosaurs wow and then i was i was over dinosaurs so then i read uh <laughs> 
like 10,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which wow. is supposed to be like a high school book, but Great. I was just really into that. You were before so. your time. <laughs> <laughs> so did you ever get picked on bit. by other kids since you were the studious one in the class? Uh, a little bit, mm. but mostly people wanted me to help them. Oh, that's wow. that's so I, would, I was I was able to leverage leverage it a little bit. And did I, you charge? <laughs> no, I was I was I was pretty um, you know, I was happy with my general safety of yeah. not being picked up on wow. pick, or yeah, not being picked on. And I was always into sports, so I guess you know the stereotypical. Oh, yeah. That's true. I was pretty broad, you mm -hmm. know. I was mm -hmm. trying to be I was I was pretty friendly with everyone, mm -hmm. so. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it was all right. Wow, that's great. Hey, I have a question for you guys. <coughs> Mm -hmm. um, so this is sort of sort of out of the blue, but I'm just curious, you guys, we heard a little bit about your talents and your experiences and what you're thinking you might do. And so here's a question, sort of bring it all together. Are you ready? Get ready. Yep. Okay. If you were going to be a superhero and you were suddenly <laughs> given superhero <laughs> powers. Oh, that's a good one. What kind of superhero would be? What would your powers be? What would you do? I love it. I would be able to teleport wherever I want. Wow, she's been thinking about it. Oh, no, that was really good. I was hoping your answer she's would be long. <laughs> I need some time to think. Uh, um, I would. I'll, I'll send it a little bit. Please elaborate, right. please. <laughs> I, well, you know, as you already know, I just want to travel, and I like to be. I like to do a lot of things at once. I'm a huge multitasker. Uh -huh. It's crazy. I sometimes can't even get one the task at hand done because I. I'm always trying to multitask. So yes. if I were able to teleport, I oh. would be able to be in so many places almost instantaneously. Wow. So, so we no just kind of pop around different places? Like yeah. teleport through time or are we just talking teleport about? Teleport just to different places, I guess, oh, okay. over distances. Oh, yeah. I wow. Like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, and answer. what would you do with that? I mean, you would just kind of functionalize your life or do you have a, a bigger plan? I would, well, on a day-to-day -day <laughs> basis, it would definitely be functional, mm -hmm. you know? But um, I guess I guess it would help with my career, you know. Uh -huh. If I'm a journalist and I want to travel to another country to cover Jettison something, here and there, yeah. <laughs> why year. why pay for airfare? You know, right. why ask my news organization yeah. to reimburse me for airfare if I could just teleport? There That's an go. economical decision. Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I like it. What about you? I guess that I would be. You like Iron Man, I guess he's like the smart inventor guy, right? So I think oh, that I think that would be a good one, right? Well, and I think too because yeah, if you're going to be a superhero, you know that you need to solve problems. That's There's right. not really a lot of supervillains, so I'd want to be able to invent uh, invent something that would help people out. Perfect. Oh, so you'd be like the entrepreneurial superhero. Mm -hmm. I can see that chemical Yeah, you know, it would that. be good. Oh wow, it that's would be exciting. Good. <laughs> so one of the one of the questions we like to ask our our. Uh, President Scholars is, if you had three words that would describe you, that would best describe you, what would those words be? Well, I would say the first would be avid. <coughs> avid? Avid, because I love learning. Uh-huh. Um, second would be... Do you want, should we alternate? So I th I yeah, I like, I like the one for one. Okay, perfect. My first word <laughs> is probably control I like I like this I idea like of being in control uh -huh. in my life uh -huh. okay and, and I think that to be the best person you can be you really need to you really need to take control of your life like give me an example you like to be in control what would you what do you like to take control of well I think that whenever you're dealing with an issue in your life uh -huh. there's two distinct there's a there's this portion of something you can you're in control of uh -huh. and there's a portion you're not that in control not. of mm -hmm. so for example you know I took a midterm today randomly uh -huh. and so my midterm I can study all the material that mm -hmm. I'm going to get mm -hmm. and I'm in control of that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in control of how uh -huh. much I'm going to study and uh -huh. how prepared I am I'm not in control of what's going to be on the test yeah. mm -hmm. therefore you know I'm not really in control of my grade mm -hmm. so I'm not worried about my grade oh. mm -hmm. but my my idea is I'm really focused on what I'm, what I can be in control mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. and so I think that is really liberating because you know, I mean, if I go up to the test and it's something I didn't study, because y you know, the, what can I do? Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm in control of what I'm in control of. Mm -hmm. Let go of the, uh, let go of the rest. Number two, I would say I wish I was more in control uh -huh. of that, <laughs> but today I just, I definitely just bombed a quiz. 
which is <laughs> disappointing. But um, I definitely am a personable person. Yes. Uh -huh. I love to talk to people. Uh -huh. I just, I'm always just tempted to communicate with people and ask people questions and just tell people things. Uh -huh. I just love expressing my feelings. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So I guess, I guess you could say I'm a really personable person. Personable. So if your quiz was on talking to people, you would have aced it? Oh, I would have aced it. <laughs> and said it was on human evolution. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. And I started studying a little too late. <laughs> so number two for you, That's Joey. Fair. I think that the second thing I think about a lot is progress and that I guess the first thing is control and the second thing is progress. So okay. you, use, you use this idea of making your choices to push yourself in a positive place. Yeah. Okay. So Move forward. I think every day, you know, like I'm, I, I'm working out, you know, I'll be lifting weights and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, the idea is to get the next, add another plate on. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, you know, to move on and, and graduate, get a job. There's always, there's always some level where mm -hmm. you can get to the next level, right? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Good, inspiring. Next time I work out, I'm gonna remember <laughs> that. That's good. <laughs> there's, now I'm, now I'm just thinking of every word in the dictionary and trying to choose one because I just, I feel like there's a lot of different aspects mm -hmm. to yeah. my personality mm -hmm. that I can. Mm -hmm. That third spot. Yeah, that third it's spot, it's yeah. a tough one. You can <laughs> hand it off to Joey. Maybe yeah. he's ready with I'll his third. Up. I think, I think I have one. Okay. Um, I mean, if someone asked me this question again, I might have three different answers. That's okay. <laughs> but That's I would a Danny thing. I would say yes, it's a Danny <laughs> thing. <laughs> I would say I would say centered, or at least my goal ah. is centered. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really yes. I really I try to be centered. I try to focus on my happiness and my clarity above all things. Because oh. even if I failed a quiz this morning, or um, I might be a little bit tired throughout the day. I mm -hmm. try to think, mm -hmm. you know, the, the best thing is to just be as focused and happy as possible. Love it. Mm -hmm. That's great. What about you, Joey? What's your third? My last one is something I actually have been thinking about a little bit this week is the idea that you need to take life not so seriously. Mm -hmm. and ah. I think. So I guess what what's lighthearted? I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to con solidify it in one be word. Be <laughs> sure. Joy to be. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's know. it. Uh, well, whatever the word is for it, right. it's just this idea that, you know, I think too, it kind of goes with this idea of control. You know, there's a lot of, what do you, <laughs> there's a lot of things in this life that you're just a person and you're going to do the best you can and that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. so, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, if you, it, if you can get a chance to laugh at something, then, you know, you, there's a lot of things in life you either laugh at, you cry mm -hmm. about and. That's I think perfect. it's the Goodness. best thing to do is to laugh about wisdom, it. Wisdom, wisdom mm -hmm. <laughs> for your wow. age. We That's have nice. certainly enjoyed learning more about you and your travels yeah. and your experiences and, and all that you want to do and, and uh, you're going to be fabulous. So thank you guys. It's thank you. Pleasure. And thank yeah, you for joining great. us. Thank you for joining <laughs> us on Journey to Success. <laughs>